Welcome to the KCIW Soapbox. I'm Lori Gallo Stoddard, and if you've got something to say, KCIW is the place for you. That's because every Wednesday at 2 in the afternoon, KCIW opens its studios to you. We have microphones, engineers, and producers on hand. All you have to do is show up and say your piece on the KCIW Soapbox. The KCIW Soapbox is an open forum for you to shout, sing, read, rap, or rhyme about what's important to you. Think of it as a radio version of a newspaper's letter to the editor. There are a few rules. The KCIW Soapbox is for personal opinions, and as a nonprofit, we can't do any political or commercial advertising. Please remember that kids are listening. Good rule to follow is don't say anything you wouldn't be comfortable having your grandmother over here. So sit back, relax, and listen to what other folks in the community have to say. This is the KCIW Soapbox. This is Robert O'Sullivan. In 2022, the City Council of Brookings made a horrendous mistake. They thought it was their right to try and limit the amount of feedings that could go on in a heroic, courageous local church and triggered a federal lawsuit in the process. This was St. Timothy's Episcopal Church, a church in town, which is very well known for being very sensitive to the needs of the poor and the unhoused and others seeking help. The council got some complaint from neighbors saying that the church was inviting undesirables and hostile individuals and vagrants into their neighborhood, and therefore they wanted the city to start limiting the feeding. However, there is federal law, and there's state law, and there's constitutional issues about this. And very recently, the Justice Department of the United States, the Attorney General, Office of Civil Rights, said that the city was wrong, and they intervened in the federal case about it. But now the new city council, dubiously chosen at best, only one of them was elected by the people, has chosen to go on with a much worse type of legislation, an abatement ordinance basically telling a church that the city should be allowed to decide for a church what's appropriate on their property. This is wrong, but that's what they did. It's not really a legal concept, but a common sense concept that punishment should somehow be justified by the offense or crime committed. In Brookings, the city council, made up of four appointed people through trickery, uh, have decided that the punishment for Christians in a congregation performing their faith should be punished $720 a day. For what crime? They haven't mentioned any crime. They simply think that somebody shouldn't be allowed to do things that are part of the church's Christian mission. This is not an appropriate way in which the punishment is used for the crime. In Brookings, it's well known that St. Timothy's has been a place where people who have troubles go to get help. They're remarkably good at fitting help to people's needs, and they've been feeding people and providing clothing to people and counseling and spiritual help for decades, and yet they are now being accused of a non-crime, but nevertheless something that should be punished at $720 a day. Is that right? We need a democratically elected city council in Brookings. This is Gina Soltis from Harbor. We need to take climate change personally. We sit with our brows furled while looking over our shoulder to see how they are addressing the ever-increasing disastrous climate change effects. It's time to take things personally for ourselves, our progeny, and all higher earthly life forms. Little steps and big are necessary. 
right now and close to home, please think about the proposed windmill projects. We must charge ahead with whatever we can do to combat climate change now. Our current and being developed tools may not yet be perfect, but we must utilize them to their full extent. They will be a bridge to a future when we have ideal methods. So, if the offshore wind project is a step in the right direction, we must take it. Our imperfect tools may have collateral damage, but we have to fully take climate change as the imminent existential threat that it is. We should no longer indulge ourselves in a societal climate of overconsumption and an economic system that relies upon continued growth. These norms have many unsavory byproducts, including a continuing need for more and more energy. We humans and corporate entities need to live within the natural resource budget of our planet. Do we care enough about the future of this planet to accept minor and major inconveniences that will improve our chances of leaving behind a planet that can sustain at least some life as we know it. It's time for all of us to take responsibility for the future of our beautiful planet. Thank you for considering this. The opinions shared on the KCIW Soapbox do not necessarily contain the views of KCIW or its volunteers. Hello, this is Rick McNamer from Smith River, California, utilizing KCIW Soapbox feature to air my rant for this week. And I'd like to dedicate my rant to one of my favorite Saturday Night Live characters, the grumpy old man played by Dana Carvey, because that's what I am sometimes. To paraphrase the great Bob Dylan, the time it is a change. Yep, this Sunday we go through the ridiculous and unnecessary resetting of our clocks. Spring forward ahead one hour this time, then fall back one hour again in November. How about we spring forward into the 21st century and forget this nonsense? Guess what? No matter what the clocks say, the amount of sunshine and darkness stays constant depending on the season. A large majority of Americans prefer no more time changes. Personally, I would prefer standard time year-round but if daylight saving times won out as the year-round choice, I'll take it. Much better than digging through my vehicle's owner's manual twice a year to relearn how to set its clock. I think it's the only thing I ever read in the owner's manual. That, along with scrambling around my house, resetting the various other digital and analog devices, just makes no sense. I'm Rick McNamer, and that's my opinion. You're listening to the KCIW Soapbox, an open forum for you to shout, sing, read, rap, or rhyme about what's important to you. Think of it as a radio version of a newspaper's letter to the editor. You can hear the KCIW Soapbox on our website, kciw.org, and of course, right here on our air, 100.7 FM. We broadcast from the Misty Mountain Black Trumpet Building in downtown Brookings, Oregon. My name is Nancy Chester. I worked for Curry County for 15 years. I started out as a planning clerk, retired as a planner. I worked under several great planners that knew their jobs very well. Each one of them had a degree in planning or extended knowledge and experience in land use planning. In, in all my 15 years, we had one interim planning director, Donald Rubenstein, attorney at law. He had extensive experience in land use laws, but all conditional use permits were contracted to Lane County for final decisions. Mr. Fitzgerald, currently planning director, is an attorney, expertise in defamation of character and slander. I'm not aware of his qualifications for planning director as described in county job description for this position. It appears Mr. Fitzgerald is making decisions on CUPs, conditional use permits, as a Curry County Community Development Director dated November 30th, 2023. Then on January 11th, 2024, he signed off on a planning clearance as interim director. On the county website, it clearly states that Ted Fitzgerald is planning director, community development director. I am certain 
Mr. Fitzgerald is aware that it is mandated by the state that we have a qualified, certified planning director on staff, or the state has the authority to assume the responsibility for land use decisions in Curry County. Mr. Fitzgerald was hired to be county counsel, but is wearing several hats, which leaves me wondering where he has the expertise for positions such as planning director, roadmaster, and other department heads, whether interim or permanent. The community was advised that the reorganization of the road department has shown substantial savings. Each piece of equipment purchased by the road department had to have board approval and was publicly noticed on BOC agendas. I was informed that the city of Gold Beach has purchased several pieces of equipment at a great price. Can you please let us know which equipment was sold and how much it was sold for and where did the money go? How can equipment belonging to Curry County Road Department be sold without public notice and the BOC approval? This must be a huge impact on finances which contribute to what the BOC claims are savings of approximately $5 million. Direct quote from Mr. Alcorn's State of the County. The 22-23 budget for County Council was $13,821.42 per month. $165,857.04 per year, but in actuality, he's been paid $213,300, the difference being $47,442.96. This is a huge savings to the county, so it must mean the other positions were never worth a 40-hour-a-week job, and the pay to these directors of the above-mentioned departments were significantly overpaid and a huge waste of county money. My question to each of the commissioners is how can you approve one person to perform the responsibility of several departments? It is your responsibility to make the decisions that are of the best interest to the county. Are any of these now vacant department head positions advertised? Mr. Alcorn, you ta- you've taken over emergency services. Is this a permanent position for you or will it be advertised? Are you going to be compensated for the work you are doing in that position? When you were running for county commissioner, you said you were going to accept a stipend and the county commissioner position was not a -a 40-hour-a-week job. You also said you were going to take steps to have five-person board, all to be paid a stipend except the chair at a higher rate. At this time, two commissioners are being paid $92,425.05. The chair is paid $95,198, not a stipend in my thinking. It will be difficult for the community to support a proposed levy while the county is paying almost a half a million dollars for four executives to run the county at the same time potentially putting the county in legal limbo without a qualified planning director. One final statement is simply a friendly reminder that HB 2805, implemented in the beginning of 2024, adds stricter accountability for government bodies in the state of Oregon regarding public meetings. I'm Nancy Chester, and that's my opinion. You're listening to the KCIW Soapbox, and this is Lori Gallo Stoddard letting you know that the opinions expressed on the KCIW Soapbox do not necessarily reflect the views of the KCIW board or its volunteers. And we remind you that every Wednesday at 2 in the afternoon, KCIW does open its studios to you. We have microphones, engineers, and producers all on hand. You just have to show up and say your piece. And now, here's more from the community on the KCIW Soapbox. I'm Dennis Triglia. I want to express my sincere thanks to the voters of Brookings for overwhelmingly supporting the recall efforts to oust ex-Mayor Hedenskog, ex-Councillor Morosky, and lame duck soon-to-be ex-Councillor Schreiber by a ratio of 7 to 3. This was clearly a community issue and not some sort of partisan ploy. I have separately contacted Governor Kotek, several legislators, and the Oregon Attorney General's office for possible help, input, or referrals. I continue to receive requests for interviews, radio, TV, and print media, and I have participated. This issue is receiving a high level of media coverage, mostly from out-of-town media sources. 
I continue to fight for the special election that the voters of Brookings are absolutely guaranteed by the Brookings City Charter. Janelle herself has admitted to at least one reporter in a phone interview that a special election would indeed be held. I am determined to keep this lack of transparency and illegal underhanded actions taken by the city in the public eye. Hopefully, other municipal jurisdictions experiencing similar situations across the state and country will fight back against cronyism and nepotism involved in appointments to their own governing bodies. And I can only hope that we have demonstrated that abuse of power by appointed and elected officials can and will result in their being recalled in the future. The council needs to respect, to hear, and to fear the general public to whom they are beholden, not the other way around. When this fiasco is over and done with, the city will have four out of five appointed councillors, highlighting the inability of the Brookings electorate to elect our choice of candidates in a special election, a right to which they are guaranteed. The city council should know better than to disrespect the Brookings City Charter as they have taken an oath. The Brookings City Charter acts as the constitution of the city and the framework for local laws that are passed by the city council and then codified into the municipal code. The city charter also provides for the structure of local government. The city charter can only be amended by a majority vote of qualified electors of the city of Brookings and not the city council. To violate the city charter is to trounce on the rights of all Brookings residents. One cannot pick and choose which parts of the charter they wish to follow. All 6,000 plus residents of Brookings should be offended. I'm Dennis Triglia. Thank you. This is Robert O'Sullivan. I live in Brookings, Oregon. One of the functions of democracy is the thought that before people are elected or put into positions of office, that the people have some idea where they stand. And that's part of what's so outrageous that a banana republic type coup took place in Brookings because the powers that be, or that were, sore losers, conspired with people on the city council to elect people that were not accountable at all. They never went to a forum by the League of Women Voters or Candidates' Nights or anything to let people ask how they stood. And that's why it is outrageous that Brookings still has a city council that has one person elected by the people and four who were the result of trickery and chicanery. I have attended city council meetings recently in which many of the new city council members, chosen very dubiously, keep spouting the word transparency. Well, many of them are only there because of a lack of transparency. Actually, a lot of low visibility, like in a dense fog that we know on the coast. And it is just so inappropriate for people to think that by saying, transparency, we be transparent. That makes them transparent. That's not the way it works. We're reminded of the biblical, don't say peace when there is no peace. Transparency means some sort of real openness and full visibility as to what's going on. When the local losers by 70% conspired to, in effect, nullify two elections, the one of which rejected them by 70%, and the other of which was supposed to happen because they had been removed by the people in a recall election. That didn't happen. They did not announce what they were going to do until 26 hours before what they did. And they, in essence, decided that they, even though they were losers and cooperating with losers, that they could conspire to make a local city government consist of people essentially chosen by the losers in a recall election. This town is sometimes known as being part of the banana belt, but this really resembles a banana republic. The KCIW Soapbox is your chance to talk, sing, rhyme, or rap about what's important to you. Show up at the KCIW studios any Wednesday at 2, and we'll give you two minutes to share your two cents. Hello, this is Rick McNamer from Smith River, California. Today, I'd like to use KCIW's Soapbox to talk about what I consider the continuing assault on women's reproductive health. 
mostly by white evangelicals who have the mistaken belief that we're supposed to be a Christian nation. We are not. The most recent attack on common sense and science by the Alabama Supreme Court that said frozen embryos are children is a perfect example of religious zealotry run amok, going so far as to threaten anyone who might accidentally destroy an embryo with serious criminal charges. What, drop a petri dish and go to prison? One justice invoked his God as one reason to equate a microscopic group of cells to a child. Absolutely ridiculous. Today's so-called pro-life movement has morphed into a more aptly named pro-forced birth movement, with almost no consideration for a pregnant mother who might have a complicated pregnancy, especially if the pregnancy happened from rape or incest. Abortion isn't strictly a black-and-white issue. It's full of nuances and gray areas, and there is room for debating the issue. But forcing a woman to carry a pregnancy to term no matter her situation, prosecuting her and her doctor for murder of a zygote or fetus, and having religious extremists dictating their skewed morals to us is wrong and cruel. I'm Rick McNamer, and that is my opinion. This is Robert O'Sullivan. I live in Brookings, Oregon. The Brookings City Council has justified using an unusual procedure known as abatement procedure to punish a church for its ministries. Now, abatement procedures are usually used to tell people to clean up their property, get rid of some vermin, get rid of trailers and and, uh, RVs and vehicles that are eyesores, but somehow the Brookings City Council, with the gang of thieves that preceded them, think it's appropriate to apply this to a church congregation fulfilling its mission to be very sensitive to the needs of the poor. And how did they justify this? Somebody on their planning staff looked in a dictionary on the internet and found two definitions, one from the Oxford English Dictionary and one from Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And these were indeed dictionary definitions that could be found in those places. However, they were just one of many definitions. The definition they chose to glom onto was saying that a church is a building for Christian worship. And then they'd come up with an elaborate explanation that if something is not Christian worship, it shouldn't be taking place in that building. Now, anyone who's been involved in a church knows that their teaching, their counseling, their accepting confessions, their helping people with their needs, they're trying in many ways to fulfill a clear mission pointed out in Matthew 25 in, in the Bible, that people should be especially sensitive to those who are hungry, to those who are thirsty, to those who are naked, to those who are unhoused, to those who are struggling, and try to help meet their needs. And those words are concluded with, inasmuch as you have done it to one of these, the least of my brethren, you have done it to me, namely Jesus Christ. Now, why should the Brookings City Council, using really dubious logic, think that a church should only be a place for Christian worship? It's costing the taxpayers of Brookings a lot of money in federal lawsuits and now something going to a land use advisory board for the state of Oregon. This is utter foolishness and very, very expensive. This is outrageous. You've been listening to the KCIW Soapbox. I'm Lori Gallo Stoddard, letting you know that every Wednesday at 2 in the afternoon, KCIW opens its studios to you for you to step up onto that KCIW soapbox. 
We have microphones, engineers, and producers on hand. All we need is you, your voice, and your opinion. And a reminder, the opinions expressed on the KCIW Soapbox do not necessarily reflect the views of the KCIW board or its volunteers. And that's because the KCIW Soapbox is an open forum for you to shout, sing, read, rap, or rhyme about what's important to you. Think of it as a radio version of newspaper's letter to the editor, but better. You can hear the KCIW Soapbox on our website, kciw.org, and of course right here on our air, KCIW 100.7. And a little bit about KCIW, we are an all-volunteer, nonprofit 501 501c3 organization. We're on the air because of you and your donations. And if you like what you hear, or if you'd like to get involved, we'd like to hear from you. Again, you can find out all about us on our website. That's kciw.org. We thank you for joining us, and we do remind you that every voice matters. We'd like to hear yours right here on KCIW. Whether you'd like to voice an opinion on the KCIW soapbox or produce your very own program, KCIW is a great place, a great opportunity for you to shine and to share what's important to you. We are located downstairs in the Misty Mountain Black Trumpet Building in downtown Brookings, Oregon, and you can always find archived soap box pieces and some of the programs we produce throughout the years on our website again kciw.org take a look and take a listen we do live stream on our website and again that's kciw.org you might be very surprised at what our community radio station has to offer i'm Lori gallo stoddard and i hope to see you wednesday at two at the kciw studios when we record your opinions for the kciw soapbox